Hey, what's up, worship teens, pastors, friends? Thanks so much for coming in to the worship teen training video podcast. We have a good friend here, Justin Rains on bass, and we're going to get to him in just a second. Uh, Want to know? Maybe you thought about this, but there are some simple things about playing bass, but most people tend to forget. And so, we just want to let you know you're not fooling anybody, but definitely. Uh, it's about skill. It's about more things that go into just playing the instrument than maybe what you realize. So the question is, are you missing these three priorities? So I can't think of anything, anyone better than Justin Rains to address this topic today. Uh, Justin uh, comes from Atlanta, Georgia area. He goes to the World Changers International Church. You can hear him on albums by Israel Houghton, uh, New Breed, Alive in Asia, and also another a deeper level album. Also, Willie McDowell, Bishop Wayne Murphy, and Elevation Worship. Uh, you can hear them on Won't Stop Now, and then also on the single Echo. So without further ado, Justin, my man, how are you today? Thanks for being here. Oh, man, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good, man. It's, uh, you know, it's another musical day, and we have a lot of bass players and worship leaders that are watching, because I think, you know, what you have to share, the things that we were talking about already, that a lot of worship leaders can gravitate to in order how to, you know, hear what they want and to get the best out of their player. You know, I think that's a, a prime thing that leaders can do. But let's talk about the bass. So um, what are the three priorities that bass players can't do without let's talk about the first one the first one is going to be skill so can you address what that is absolutely you know um you know the bible says uh to study to show thyself approved you know and i like to you know take things from the bible literal to different things in our lives so study to show myself approved is me practicing my instrument <laughs> you know i'm going to study this instrument even though a lot of people are gifted you still want to study your craft whether it's the piano or the drums or the bass or whatever it is singing production um skill the bible says play skillfully it's a <laughs> you know it's written it's written there play skillfully right. and joyfully uh, and, and 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 joyfully you know and as a teacher you know i you know i teach skill i teach foundation and one of the things that i that i always stress is you know or or pinpoint is that it's a it, it, it's our vocabulary you know we learn the vocabulary so that we can speak so that we can be free on our instrument um, you think of a child when they're learning how to speak or, or they're going to school, they're learning their vocabulary, they're learning their nouns, pronouns, and verbs, and how to form a sentence um, so that they can have a conversation. You know, same thing with us musicians, bass players, learn your fretboard, learn your scales. You don't have to dive deep into theory, just know the basics, you know, um, know the number system, know what a C major scale is, you know, know where the notes are on your instrument, even as a hobbyist, you know, just kind of knowing what it is, skill, learn your skill, take the time to, to invest in your craft, invest in your skill. Um, it just makes this easier. It makes it so much easier and connecting with your bandmates. Hmm. So uh, tell us what are some things that are critical for you when it comes to skill and can you demonstrate some of your skillful playing? Yes, absolutely. So some things for me are clarity, um, tone, uh, clarity and tone are probably the biggest things because hmm. and, 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 and control, clarity, tone, control people always ask to, about talk about playing fast or are you in control while you're playing fast <laughs> you know being in control everything comes out clean clarity you know and then the tone of your instrument is it a nice round bass tone i'm playing the bass can you feel the bass whenever i play not a, too much low end not very high like right there in the middle can you feel the bass Whenever I play, I should probably turn it on so you can hear it. And there we go. <laughs> um, but my tone, you know, my natural finger style. 
it's it's nice it's nice and clear you hear it clear i'm plugged directly in so you're hearing the natural tone of my instrument and my fingers you know and th and that's kind of where skill comes into mm. learning how to actually play the string you know some people they get yeah. the string and some people dig too hard some people don't play hard enough finding that happy medium But you know, there's something to that. You said play the string, and that's not a very common phrase or thing to think about. Yeah. Um, what, I kind of just said it off the top of my head, but it makes so much sense to me. <laughs> you yeah. know, so where some people play at the instrument, you know, so mm -hmm. they're, if they pick up the bass and they just, just kind of just playing at the instrument. So when I say play the string, we've got to, Bass players, guitars, we have a hard job. We've got to make this instrument sing from our fleshy fingers, like like literally <laughs> our fleshy fingers on steel strings. We've got to make a nice tone, you know, come out of the instrument. And you know what what I teach a lot of my students is is whenever you're playing with your right hand, you're going in, into the next string. So if you play a four string, guys, don't be, you know, don't be messed up by this fifth string just ignore it it doesn't exist <laughs> you know but whatever you're playing it's going your fingers going directly into the next string you know you don't have to you don't have to do that because that compromises the entire tone right. you can't play a song it's going to sound terrible <laughs> you want it nice touch nice round tone You know, um, another part of skill is your scales. You know, when you know your scales, and and I, I want to emphasize this or emphasize this a little bit because most people are bored by scales. They hear, oh, okay, I know my scales. Now what? Mm -hmm. Now teach me the fast thing. Teach me the, you know, the hard <laughs> thing. Right. When, when in actuality, the scales, that's a, that's a part of our, of, of our vocabulary, not just to know that, not just to say we know how to play a particular scale shape, but what are those notes? What is, what is the one sound like? What does the five sound like? What does the three sound like? Mm, four, two, five, one, seven, six, flat seven, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> what do these particular notes sound like in your bass? And not everybody, of course, is going to play all, all over the instrument, but it's good to know how to. One of my teachers in middle school told me, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Mm -hmm. When he said that, he was talking about a pencil. You know, like make sure you bring a pencil to class because he because he liked to make marks in our sheet music and change things up to keep us on our toes. And maybe eight, nine, ten years later, I'm an adult and that phrase kept playing back at me. So I was like, oh, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And you can apply that to any part of your life, you know. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But I'm going to apply it to the bass. It's better to know all of these notes up here. It's better to know all, all, all those notes and have it and not need it. Then need it one day, you know, somebody says, hey, we're going to do this song and we need you to play the melody up here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, Let's see. Somebody says, I just want bass today. Uh, It's, it's 
better to nice. have those nice. skills than need them and not have them. You know, so that's once again skill, you know, just being yeah. able to yeah. say exactly what you want to say. You know, everybody you know, go ahead. Well, sorry, this gets us into another topic too, because when you're saying about, you know, skill and speaking, but there's also the art of listening. And I and I find you doing that a lot in between the notes, which is not common by a lot of musicians because musicians just want to go ahead and play and just get into it. Like you said, play the fast stuff. But what you do, you're listening in between the notes, not just the notes themselves, but you're listening to where it's going and where it came from. Absolutely. You know, um, that same teacher is, it's funny how all of these things are kind of coming back to me, like right now, <laughs> that same teacher, you know, whenever we would read music, he's, he, 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 he would say phrases like play the rest. Mm. You know, when you see the rest, play them. Mm -hmm. like, what? Like, what do you mean? Play the rest. <laughs> um, essentially what he was saying is feel them, you know, like acknowledge the space, play the space. You know, so whenever I'm, um, and, and it makes you be a little bit more intentional about what you're going to play. If you take the time and think. Think about exactly what you're going to play, and it and on the practical side, it helps eliminate mistakes. <laughs> you think about what's next. But by doing Remember. that, but as you're doing that and listening, you're also creating more space for the thirds and fifths to be heard, and you're Absolutely. not clouding them up. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Now, see, sorry, there, <laughs> I love this. No, so like when we're talking about creating space, listening, everything that also has a lot to do with flow, right? Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what does it mean to flow and what does it mean as our second point? Let's get into like, there's spiritual awareness, right? There's also comes with that musical awareness that all fits together with flow. So can you talk about flow? Absolutely. Um, um, I think it, actually stems even from the skill you have a certain level in like have a certain skill level which allows you to flow because in, in a flow you're not thinking about oh where do i go what note do i go next to if you if you have a leader that is i'll just say a leader that is tapped in you know a leader that is is in the worship service they are paying attention they are spiritually aware of what's going on you know it is up from it, it is my job to flow with them so what that means as far as the skill level goes if we're playing say we're in a key of c and we're kind of resting on the four and they're saying go to the three Go to the six, two, three, four, six, five, four. So being able to kind of know where people are going or anticipate, and try to, and it's like, it's, it's a, and this kind of goes into being a leader as well flowing with a with a worship leader how can i anticipate where you're going to go without trying to lead you because i'm still because i'm still following you but i'm trying to be i'm trying to anticipate where you're going to go and um sidebar that kind of goes with relationship when you build a relationship with your team with your with your worship leader with your pastor with your musicians when you spend time together that 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 bond of fellowship it makes it it makes communication and flow seamless when you're in a worship service 
or just like whenever you're flowing, it, it, it makes it seamless, that, that relationship. That was a little, little sidebar, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, it, um, but it means a lot. And kind of going back to what you're saying as far as being spiritually aware, being in the moment, not in your base, not in the keys, being in the moment, of what's going on so you don't play something that you're not supposed to at that particular time mm -hmm. you're not shedding mm -hmm. you're not like your part is so important mm -hmm. and and especially in moments of worship where it seems like musically there's not a lot going on your is doing a lot more than you think it is you know and also when he's up here like it's it's both ways whether it's we are here or we're just now see what you're getting into though is also about following so let's talk about that as our third point following Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of literal following, being able to follow, you know, the leaders that are in front of you. Um, that's kind of like moving your ego aside. So me, I'm, I'm, I'm a musical director, but I also serve and follow under someone else that's a musical director. If someone else is directing, I may have so much knowledge and experience and, and you know, God's allowed me to travel the world. I know more than you. I am to follow at that moment. I am to submit, where are you going? Because right now you're in leadership and I'm gonna follow you. You know what I mean? And vice versa, people are more inclined to follow a, a leader that leads by example, you know? And that's if someone, if the worship leader is over top of me or the worship pastor and I'm following them, the band is going to more likely be inclined or, or want to follow me because I'm leading by example as a, as a leader. So they, so, so they go hand in hand. Some of the greatest leaders are some of the best followers, you know? So. True. So let's talk about you. Um, I mean, you gave, you gave an awesome cascade of skill, and and moving through that so what about you how is what's your story Oof. do we have enough time <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why we're here i will try to so my so, so here's my story um i started playing music you know grew, grew up in church of course like most most musicians um, I, I grew up in church, picked up the trumpet in elementary school, and um, I was heavy in the jazz. Trumpet, mm -hmm. trumpet. I, I went to performing arts middle school, went to a performing arts high school. Um, um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and on Saturdays back then, we had a, a music school on Saturdays, and it was called Centers for the Musically Talented. So I was in music school from Monday through Saturday. And wow. if you include Sunday, church. Right. You know? Still in school. <laughs> um, right. M music school. Mm -hmm. um, I picked up bass in the in the 10th grade. And um, because I went to a music school, you know, by by default, you know, I play drums, I play piano and stuff like that. And growing up in church you know in pittsburgh there were a lot of amazing musicians and singers and choirs that um that i was afforded to you know study under and sit under mm -hmm. and i was just a sponge mm -hmm. and i had a I had a great community around me that invested into me you know they would i had a lady from my church that gave me the newest gospel album every Tuesday. She would give me a gospel wow. album, give me an album to learn, give me an album. Mm -hmm. And I would go home and learn. I didn't play a lot of video games. I didn't play sports. I literally sat at home and practiced yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 
and it paid off in in different in ways that I didn't appreciate. You know, I thought everybody that played an in, in instrument in middle school practiced eight hours a day, <laughs> or if they went to a performing arts high school, that I thought everybody like took their craft serious. You know, um, and 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 I did and. Like I said, growing up around the community that that I that I did grow up around, they they imparted so much knowledge. They prayed over me, and I ended up going to Berkeley College of Music. Mm, awesome. And, um, while at Berkeley, you know, I had so many connections with so many different people, and it's a it's a networking just mega mega just networking right. to this day right. like relationships that I've built you know in, in college to this day, um, and you know God afforded me you know the opportunity to play for you know Karen Clark Sheard and and mm-hmm. these different gospel artists from here and there, and I and I got the call in two thousand five to play for Israel and um, of, of Israel Houghton. And that came by word of mouth. Somebody saw me. It wasn't an audition. Somebody saw me and somebody put it in Israel's ear. Mm. And that started a, what now is a 16 year relationship. Mm. I've been with Israel Houghton in Newbury for 16 years. Wow. And throughout that time, I said, you you know, God has given me the, I've traveled the world with, with, with Israel and William McDowell and Mm -hmm. the records with different artists, Micah Stampley and, and Elevation, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. I've gone to Hillsong over in Australia and London and South Africa, you know, and like I've, I've been afforded all these different opportunities. Um, but, but in the midst of that around, um, 2007, 2008, my kidneys begin to get foul. Um, and, and they fully, so from, from 2007 to 2009, mm-hmm. I was kind of like a test dummy. You know, I was, I was a guinea pig mm-hmm. because my kidneys were, my, my kidneys were failing, but the doctors couldn't tell me why. The only thing they knew were mm-hmm. your kidneys are failing. Wow. You have you you have an, an an autoimmune disease that is eating at your kidneys, and we don't know why. I'm a healthy guy. Matter of fact, I went on a fast right before everything happened. <laughs> you know, and and um, so for two years, I mean, I was at one point I, I was your complexion. I lost my pigmentation. Wow. Wow. I was about 230 pounds of water weight from mm-hmm. medications. I was on like 16 different medications. It was a true trial, a true test. Okay. Gosh. Um, and in 2009, I had to go on dialysis. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was on dialysis for four years. That was the toughest four wow. years of my life. Okay. Um, for that first year, I'm you know, battling depression. But can't show that so many people are looking at Justin Reigns. I got to play, but mm-hmm. me ministering to others is what helped me through it. And then I lived it out loud. If people mm-hmm. followed me, they saw me. I, I, I looked different. I was big. I was small. I was light. I was dark. You know, like what's going on? <laughs> what's going on with mm-hmm. Justin? So for four years, I, I, I was on dialysis. And then um, November 16th, 2013, I got the call um, for kidney transplant. Wow. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a successful recipient of awesome. kidney transplant for eight years now. Wow. Eight years it, it's been. And during that time, I, already, I always feel I had a good relationship with God. Great relationship with Christ. But during that time, where I questioned God so many times, you know, that's where I, where I got closer to him. That's where I got closer to building that relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And he said, I will push you forward. I know I see what's going on. I know what's going on in your life, but I will push you forward. Just stay in it. And that was my promise to God. I said, you know, I'm still going to serve you. I'm still going to do what I'm supposed to do. 
Hmm. And, and he kept all of his promises. So that's, that's my, that's the part that that's just my story. You know, Hmm. Um, I'm a teacher. I love to teach. I love to share. I love to, you know, share my experiences. I've, 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 I've been, I've, I've studied music since the fifth grade, all, all the way through college. I've, I've traveled with, you know, some amazing people in, in, in gospel and in, and in secular, you know, I've been, I'm a professional musician. I've, I've had that opportunity to, um, the, or I've been given those experiences, you know, and, um, which has allowed you know me to come in contact with amazing people. It's allowed us to, you know, connect you know through Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. it, it's a blessing to it, it's a blessing for me to connect with you and uh, and just for us to hear your story and to bring us into your world. Uh, it's just amazing, Justin. Uh, where can people find your music? Where can they find your Instagram and where I'll, wherever else to connect you and to connect with your lessons? Absolutely. So my 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 Instagram is jrains112. So J R A I N E S one one two on Instagram. Facebook is Justin Rains. Um, lessons you can reach out to me jrains dot lessons at gmail dot com. Um, music. Most of Israel Houghton and New Breeds albums. So deeper level. Uh, Jesus at the Center album, Alive in Asia album, um, Pastor William McDowell, Sounds of Revival, one and two, The Cry by Pastor William McDowell, um, Elevation Worship, I, I played on Echo and I also played on Won't Stop Now, played on a lot of a lot of other uh, reach out to me. Yeah. Talk yeah. to me. You know. <laughs> we and, will. Um, We're gonna send people your way. And um and and I also have a single. I put it out about two years ago. Ooh. A bass bass single. It's a it's a it's a it's a vibe. That's what I call it. It's a vibe. It's a, it's a real nice, chill music. I wanted to make something that everybody could listen to. I didn't want it to wow. just be a musician's song. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I made it so like anybody can listen to it. I've I've gotten reviews of people listening to it in their prayer time. Some people just need to just relax and they'll listen to hmm. it. Um, Where can the they find it? Oh, you can find it on iTunes. Apple Music, uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube. It's called um, "Never Letting Go." Okay, so Justin, never Rains. letting go. Never I'm gonna go. I'm gonna search that out right after this. Absolutely, <laughs> that's so awesome, Justin, my man. It is so great to have you on. Thanks for sharing everything with us. Your heart, your soul, your playing. It means so much to people, and I can just tell that you're you are making such an impact through people's lives and how God is using you. So thank you for your commitment to the kingdom. Oh man, thank you. I thank you for like like I said, thank you for reaching out. Um, it is definitely like a, a desire, and and it's my heart to to you know share the experiences that i've experienced you know and um i'm willing to share them with anybody if you have an ear to hear i will share <laughs> <laughs> awesome well guys uh be sure to check out justin uh, go to his instagram you're going to find a lot of awesome great videos again find him at j rains r-a-i-n-e-s 112 and also the j rains dot lessons at gmail.com so it just has been a pleasure. Thanks so much again for being here. Thank you for having me. You bet. And everybody else, thanks so much for being here today with us on the Worship Team Training video podcast. We'll see you back soon next time. Bye.